Okay. Are we good? We don't know. And I don't want to open another window. I'll cut all this out. When I see the chat start coming in, that means we're good. So, I wonder if we're good. <clears throat> No chat yet. Are we live? This is live. Oh! Alright. Random thoughts and things with Florida girl. Okay, I'm going to just call you random. How is the audio? What are we sitting at here? Are we good for audio? I don't want to be screaming into your guys' face. I can turn it down if you want me to turn it down. I'm going to find where this live stream is. Can't seem to find it. We are live. Spider dude. It's actually not showing up on the back end. I wonder where it is. Oh, I got to go to my channel. Okay. Videos. Live showcase. Okay. Streaming. There it is. All right. Hello. Random. Lazar, sounds good. Spider dude, can hear you well enough. Brittany Kirby, is that your real name? Just played Kirby yesterday with my boy on uh, Switch. All right, well, I'm going to close all these tabs because if you have tabs open, I think it loops. So we're going to not have that open. All right, you guys have spoken. Um, we had a, to uh, a poll and uh, what we had was... I'm going to pull that up because um, very important. So we had a poll as to what you guys wanted to see Excuse me, on um, the live. We had a choice of four. And we gave you guys uh, Top Joy Butterfly, the Re-Inkstone R1, which I thought would have won because that's like a touchy situation right now, right now with everybody in the whole... Uh, is it real, is it not, kind of thing. And um, the Boy U P10W, which is Boy U with note-taking. I mean, I thought that would have done very well as well. But you guys, out of 925 votes, 70% of you said the Paper White 5. So, Paper White 5, Signature Edition. Signature Edition is here. So what we're going to do is let you guys all kind of filter in for a little bit until we have a decent roster of people. And I'm just going to check. Is the audio... I think we are there. Uh-oh. We're on the wrong mic, everybody. This is good because we only got like eight guys watching right now. So this is good. We are going to change some stuff, properties... Uh, still getting everything going, uh, still trying to get everything set up on um, uh, OBS because, uh, uh, what do you call, um, uh, the guys set it up for me. I've only used it a couple times, so still trying to figure everything out. Uh, Razer, Siren, X, I think that should be this mic. Audio is crisp. Crisp is what we want to hear. Why is it getting out of there? Well, don't fix what ain't broke, I guess. All right, audio is crisp. So, how's everybody doing? Everybody's good? We got uh, we got our two Kindles here. We have our Kindle Paperwhite 32 gigabyte, um, uh, what do you call? Um, signature edition, device info, device info. So you can see that this is the 32 gigabyte, which you don't actually get 32 gigs. That is not a real thing. You don't get it, you won't get it. <laughs> you only get 26, 26, 27, around there. So um, that's just the reality of the situation. They're both great devices. Um, this guy is $50 more than this. And with a, and with both of these being under $200, that is a significant difference. That's like a quarter of the cost, if not more, of a third of the cost, going towards the uh, light sensor the um, storage size, which you can't expand. So you're kind of stuck with storage. If you have, if you have um, the eight gig, you're not gonna be able to get uh, anything bigger because there's no SD card on there. So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to go over to the uh, video where we had the review done. And we are going to answer some questions on the review video of the paper white signature under comments. So, yes. So, someone, uh, Michael Elsie says, uh, is there going to be an Amazon color e-reader? Probably not. Um, Amazon did not seem to adopt color since they began with the whole, um, like, color came around 2020. And that's when the iReader C6 came out. That's when the uh, Pocketbook Color, uh, so, sorry, yeah, no, that's right. Pocketbook Color came out. That's when all those started to come out. So they didn't adopt uh, color. And I don't know if they will. So that's where that sits, basically. I'm just hoping audio is still fine because it looks like we've hit a snag with comments and audio. Everything is still working out with these technical situations. I actually don't even see the live on the broadcast here. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, 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 it's going, it's going. Sorry, yeah, okay, we're, we're just, uh, we're letting everything happen the way it is. Okay, okay. Uh, someone else said, looking at the uh, questions, uh, or comments, I guess we should just say in general, Danielle McDonald said the 32 gigabyte is a huge selling point. Yes, it is, because when you get this, you're only getting 5.91 on the 8 gigabyte. You cannot expand that. You can use cloud storage to some degree. And a lot of people say you're never going to have 6 gigs worth of books. At any given time, you're going to be able to read. So that's totally fair, because... Obviously, you're not going to cycle through, you know, 10,000 books. If, if you want some room, you just remove some books. So that is that is obviously a reality is that you don't need you don't need the 32 gigs. But with the 32 gig model, you do have um, the light sensor. And that's a huge thing. Let's see if I can pull focus on this. Remember, we're using webcams here, so there's no manual focus. Right there. There's a little rectangle at the top, right there, right where that light is right there. See, I'll just go off a little bit. So that is the light sensor, and that is what is going to be able to allow you to do this. And, oh, yeah, also, why this is different is because uh, this is the 8 gigabyte model, and this is the one that we have signed into on our Amazon.com account, American account, because we have operations in um, uh, Canada, Japan, and uh, America. So that's why you see Bluetooth. Japan doesn't have Bluetooth for all Kindles yet. They do have Audible, but this one uh, we signed into our Japan account just so we can see how it's different if we, you know, if we have to service our Japanese customers or our American Canadian customers. There's no Bluetooth toggle, although there is Audible on here. If you go to the Audible store, you'll see it. So um, it's just laid out differently. But anyways, you'll see right here they have auto brightness. And auto brightness is only going to be on the 32 gig because it corresponds with the piece of hardware that is in the top of the bezel right there. And this one will not have that. And this is not to be confused with, uh, where is it here? Ch -ch 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 display settings, warmth schedule. Warmth schedule is completely different. They'll both have that. Warmth schedule is going to be where you schedule when you want your warm light to turn on, whether it's manual, automatic, gradual, uh, and it has to do with the time, not the actual light sensor, because the 8 gig does not have a light sensor. So yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Free Styler 39 said, perfect timing. Uh, I was set on getting the Libra 2 at Best Buy Canada. We'll have the... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was set on getting the Libra 2, comma, but Best Buy Canada will have the 8 gigabyte paper white sale for 115 on bf oh black friday so i'm leaning towards the kindle uh yeah libra and kindle we did a comparison the libra is a better product if you're comparing the releases of kindles versus the releases of kobos in 2021 the, the kobo is better yes they're in a little bit different leagues ever so slightly but 
yeah, the Kobo just has more books, physical page turn buttons. It's just, um, I think, yeah, base 32 gigs on the Kobo Libra, I think, too. The Tolino did um, 16 gigs for some weird reason. I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, this, this this is still a very good product. We we say that the, the, the Sage and the um, uh, Libra, too, are great, and these are good. But... Uh, but it's a matter of opinion, you know, it's a matter of what you want out of a device. If you have everything already tied up into Amazon, as you can see here, this is our sixth Kindle in the U.S. and our third Kindle in uh, Japan, it's obviously an easier transition to just, you know, sign in with Amazon, you have your Prime membership, you know, it's just so much easier. Sure, if you have nothing with Kobo, you're going to have to start off from square one, absolutely. Ayush says, was there really a need for a signature version? Because if you really want high storage audiobooks, you can just use your phone. Yes, for audiobooks, you are absolutely correct. Just use your phone. I have so much storage. I can put SD cards in here and get more storage. But actually, no. Because audio, I was going to say, well, it's not an e-ink screen. Well, you don't need an e-ink screen for audiobooks. You are absolutely correct. But an e-ink device will last longer than a smartphone even if it is a dedicated audio player these will last much longer but there 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 opens the uh, your point is that they don't have speakers you're right so for audiobooks if you guys are buying e-readers for the sole purpose of getting audiobooks it, you don't really need an e-reader then you wouldn't really need any reader and that's that's true because yeah you, you have you, more often than not you have lack of speakers on all these devices uh, most of them can't do android unless you get an android device so yeah actually that's a very good point um if it's just an audiobook player a new reader would not be a wise decision because um it's it's not it's not really made for it if you think about it yeah that's kind of eye-opening even to us because like you know they, they push a lot of um audiobooks and if you go to the stores respectively here we will go to this store and this store show you how they lay things out differently you will see i think it says audible here somewhere yeah so they have the audible store in japan and they have the audible audible toggle in the u.s you could toggle between them um, yeah, it, the screen doesn't really matter when it has to do with uh, audiobooks because you're just looking at a screen that has an audiobook playing. We'll, we'll show you an example right now. Oh yeah, they moved everything around. I, I, you can't go home anymore. You have to, you got to go uh, X, exit out. Uh, where's an audiobook? I think we had one in our library. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, there it is, Mountain Man. So this is what an audiobook looks like on a Kindle. That's it. I mean, yeah, um... Ayush is correct. You just you can use your, your phone. <laughs> that's that's all you need. Because as you press play, actually nothing even happens because you need a Bluetooth device connected. So in order to even start it, it needs to go to where it's doing right now, the Bluetooth menu and everything, and you're gonna have to search and yeah, you, you definitely it's not um it's not necessary. Uh, what do we got here? SS, has anyone noticed faint creaking slash popping sounds when squeezing together both ends of the side bezels, especially around the middle to bottom area, as if the plastic is hollow underneath? Squeezing together both ends. Right here? Middle to bottom. Let's try middle. Here, let's get some audio here. Bottom. Don't hear any popping. Let's try the signature. Like this, you you were trying to uh, tell us like. You know what? Um, to be completely honest, this is one of the more tightly built devices, where the outer bezel. This is the inner bezel. Bezel uh, a bezel is the thing that surrounds the screen, and they usually have an inner bezel and an outer bezel. The outer bezel is a rubber kind of stopper so if you drop it it'll hit um the outer bezel is actually raised a little bit to protect the screen if you know if it lands like that but um no i this is this is a very tightly built unit uh which could be good or bad with the more tightly built units uh some of the best examples of tightly built units are onyx devices they can break because everything is so steam packed from factory that things could actually uh, crack you know so yeah um we we would uh we would probably um recommend not 
<laughs> squeezing your device to the point of, <coughs> pardon me, um, hearing this, the, 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 you know, the, um, the, the cracks between the, the adhesive between the glass and the, uh, outer side. And we did a teardown. If you want to go to our, our YouTube channel, we have a teardown on the, um, average e reader of what kind of goes into all the layers. There's a lot of stuff, but there's no pen open. Don't worry. There's a lot of stuff between the actual e-ink screen and where your eyes are, are, are looking down onto. It's surprisingly very layered. There's like six layers of stuff. It's pretty crazy. Even more so if you have color, because there's a color array filter on top. So what do we got here? We got Mark Jurgen. How do you expect it to compare to the book's leaf? Um, the book's leaf is a seven inch device that I'm going to go on my phone really quick because I'm going to hide it <laughs> because we did get some more information from Onyx this morning and I'm not entirely sure we can talk about it yet. Let's see if we can talk about it. I'm not actually sure. So if we go to our secret email, uh, here it is right here. Leaf. Ooh. Ooh. No, I'm, I'm actually searching for it. I can't find it. Uh, there was an email sent this morning between all of us. And... Yeah. I don't think we can say too much right now. But I am going to WhatsApp the guys in the office next door and see if we can talk about it. And then if I get a... Um, oh, here it is. November 19th, 10 a.m. Chinese time. Which is actually in 14 minutes from now. I wonder if we can talk about it. Well, that's not what today is about anyways. But uh, we will be covering that. Of course, we do... Um, we do videos all the time, and we just finished a trade show the other day. Two of us and me, so three of us, uh, we all went down to um, uh, Tokyo, and we went to Connected Inc. 2021, and we had some good meetings with people, um, had some meetings with people off location and on location, and it was uh, it was good. You guys can ask questions about the company as well. You don't have to just ask about the Kindles. You can. This is like your guys' shot to ask everything about goody reader as well if you have any questions about anything we can most definitely assist you in trying to answer as much as we can so uh sorry i'm backlogged here ss um si oh yeah uh spider dude don't squeeze the charmin you mean like the toilet paper i don't know what that means spider dude what does that mean ss yes i grip both sides with one hand some like that okay sometimes it happens i only hear it at night when the room's completely quiet everyone quiet everyone quiet shh no, I can't hear anything. I mean, I, you, you don't ever have to be like, oh, I love this book, and you're, you're squeezing to the point where, like, your veins are popping out. Uh, unless you really love the book, then, you know, go at it. But, um, no, you know what? I can't say I hear anything. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I think, you know, you might have a, a dud device. Sometimes devices from factories come very loose and not well put together. So, uh... I was going to say a brand that we know that is evident of this, but we're not going to say it, are we? No. Freestyler39, does the thinner bezels make it more difficult to hold by the side without accidental screen touches? That, Freestyler, is something that I personally have a problem with on this unit. For example, because we now moved over to a 6.8 over a 6, I have fairly big hands. Not long fingers, but the span is decent. But when I'm holding it here and I reach across, I'm only, you know, I'm tilting it because of gravity. I'm only 80% away from the screen. What if I wanted to long press something? I know you say, oh, you use your other hand. I understand. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of things like that that require companies like us to nitpick. So if I'm long pressing something like that, the meat from my thumb starts to push down on the screen, like legitimately. So, yeah, when you start to reach over to certain things, you're interacting. See, look, I'm not even... You're interacting with different parts of your hands. And I understand, again, you know, you could say it's nitpicking, but that's the point. That's the point of us being here is to nitpick. That's what our company is. We nitpick over things and be like, oh, this screen size to bezel ratio is this, that, and the other thing. That's the point. Yes, you are correct, um, Freestyler. Because it's gone to a bigger screen size and a different ratio, it's harder to hit other things. And it's harder to reach. Like, as phones get longer... Dang, you guys seen the Xperia 1 
three or whatever. It's such a long phone. Like even now, if I have, to, if I'm holding it with my pinky as the gravity stopper, you know, like you go like that. Oh, hey. And I want to touch them. I can't reach the top of the screen. What if I want to change my items in my game? I got to go like this. You know what I mean? And then you got to go back down. So yeah, there's definitely something to be said by changing the screen ratio in which like, you know, the vertical pixels and horizontal pixels and just the overall screen to body ratio as it changes, your interactions with it change alongside. So you are very true. Uh, Branco or Bronco. Can you compare side by side with the Onyx Books Nova 2? Nova 2, um, no, we won't be doing that. Unfortunately, reason being, it's that's just too old. That's way too old. Uh, we're at the Nova 3, 3 color, and then the Nova Air, so no, we won't be going back to the 2, unfortunately. Uh, do you recommend dark mode for reading? Here, you know what? Because we got both. This wasn't kind of supposed to be a recommend recommended... Sorry, <laughs> start over. Everyone quit this browser and we'll start over. This wasn't supposed to be a comparison showcase but obviously we can do it so signature i should like you know i should have got i can't do like on screen oh, i guess i could have done on screen things in obs but uh, we're still learning it you know what you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go like this because it's important let's use this that's the 32 gig because i know a lot of you guys are gonna watch halfway and not know where you are. That's the 32 gig. I don't need to really write the eight because the other one's the eight. Oh, you know what, here, watch. <laughs> All right, so that's the 32 gig right here. So this is the signature edition in the left, on the left. So these are the same screens. They're the exact same screens. They're the exact same unit head to toe, except for the, obviously the wireless charging, which we will show in a second, or in case you guys ask, then I will just interrupt and show. Dark mode. This is what dark mode looks like on a normally bright day. You can see it's a it's a fairly bright day here in the office. That's what the difference looks like side by side. So that's that's what that looks like. Spider dude, bad. Don't squeeze the Charmin. Yeah, I understand that don't squeeze the Charmin, Charmin means bad, but I just didn't get the reference. I'm sorry. Spider dude, I'm obsessed with dark mode reading. Yeah, look at that. Eh? You know what I must say though, at night, dark mode with warm light is terrible. Looks awful. I'm just going to say that right now. Let's show it. You can't really tell, honestly, because it's not dark, but it looks bad. Um, it, it's like the background turns kind of muddy and all the characters are like these, just like a peach that just went bad, like a spoiled peach. It's not very good. I, I don't, I don't like the, um... I don't like dark mode with warm lighting. It's great for your eyes. Dark mode plus warm light is fantastic for your eyes. It is such a joy to look at that. You don't feel any strain. You don't feel any strain anyways because e-paper is paper. It's electronic paper. But that, staring at a white background, and paper white's pretty white, granted, it can affect your eyes over time, just like when people read a book. And then, oh, hold on, I'm going to show you. There we go. People read a book for a long time and they always go like this, you know, they drop their glasses and they, they, they pinch the bridge of their nose. Because looking at anything for a long time that has a contrasting feel to it like that, and obviously e-readers have a lot of white space because only the text is black. So, yeah, looking at that compared to this, obviously dark mode is the better way to go. And for you guys that didn't watch the review, dark mode works on everything except certain manga. You see, it does not flip it flips the outsides but it won't flip the actual manga or you can do side loaded pdfs will flip see it's flipped everything it, it's it's reversed everything you can see the, the guy on the next page here look at him look at that guy he looks like a like a phantom see so yeah um pd uh, the the dark mode is gonna be kind of pick and choosy so you gotta work work with that uh, what we got here? Seno Antonio Briones Castillo. Modo obscuro, obscuro is so good. Obscuring mode, perhaps? I don't speak Spanish, but I, um, I, I assume something to do with obscuring the mode. So yeah, probably uh, dark mode is probably what that means. Ayush, even a third friend said the sunken screen was way better than the flush screen, so it's probably not a universal thing. Okay, I can tell you guys right now. Can you tell guys right now? I should have brought an e-reader with a sunken screen. I don't have any. Oh, should I yell to them? 
bring me one. No, sunken screens are always going to be better. If you got after this video, watch the teardown video because it answers a lot of questions. A lot of you guys say, well, what if the screen gets damaged? A sunken screen doesn't mean the... I don't even have a piece of paper. Doesn't mean that the, the screen is, is exposed to the point where you can like scratch it. Even the e-ink screen has a layer of plastic or gel baked on there from factory. So the EPD, the electronic paper display that people buy the, the display before they put it in the housing to create an e-reader, that already has a cover on it. So you're never going to be damaging the screen to the point where you're going to be like scratching away at the pixels on the screen it's not like that so but yes when you have a uh, a sunken screen you have less things and more importantly a, a less one one fewer thick layer of glass in between your eyes and the actual e-ink surface so a sunken screen is always going to be better it's always going to look better it'll be more uh it'll be more it would be more dangerous long term if you drop something on it sure but it's going to be better. Yeah, it's going to look better. What we got here? Young, youngest owl. The location of the power button still sucks. Oh my gosh, thank you. Yes, this power button location is horrendous. And man, is it sensitive. It is the most sensitive power button ever. You barely touch it and it goes off on you. Hold on, I brought some. Now, we don't know because it hasn't released yet. This is just an anchor one we got from Amazon. But the wireless charging pad for Amazon looks a lot like this. It's it's a it's a stand up. Oh well, that's why I have multiple angles. I can show you. It's a stand up. You have the USB there, and it stands up. When you put this down on anything, the weight of itself turns it off. So I don't know because it doesn't release till December. If the wireless charging port uh, the wireless charging pad sorry has a little gap cut out or two little raised rubber stoppers to prevent it from hitting that button because if you want to use wireless charging it does work but the second you you put it down on something like that it just it triggers because the power button is so sensitive to the point that the weight of the device from here to there Pulling down on it is enough. Just the inherent weight is enough to trigger the power button. It's a silly design. I don't know why they made it so easy to touch. Whereas other companies like Kobo are putting them on the back flush so you don't accidentally ever touch it. Sometimes when, I, when we propped this up to do B-roll, we propped it up and we're like, okay, okay, good. When we start rolling and it's like two seconds later, it says, do you want to power off? And we're like, oh my gosh. So yeah, there's definitely um, some work that needs to be done with that. Uh, Branko, I was just asking to see if there's any significant difference in the screen quality between Nova 2 and current gen. Thank you. Uh, yes, Branko, this is using the Carta 1200. The Nova 3, or over here, the Nova 2 and Nova 3 are not using any of the newer Carta stuff. So that's um, that's what the difference is uh, right there. Uh, Adrian Caratanuto, my mother is back to add to the chat and she said boo a little bit late because we're past halloween but boo back to you as well derora exactly nighttime leave warm light alone you mean oh yeah yeah okay yeah it's the the chat is delayed and and depends on when you're watching yeah for sure uh warm light plus night is it, it's again good for your eyes but just it looks terrible looks absolutely awful just gonna say that i used i'm really tempted to buy the ink palm five but i'm concerned about my eye health do you think but I am concerned about my eye. Well, that's why you would buy it. Yeah, for sure. Do you think size plays a big part in the e-reader's eye health, or is it because of the ink? Both, really, because if you're looking at a big screen that has big characters... Oh, here, watch. Everyone just, just watch, watch. Pull out your popcorn, sit back, and watch this. This is going to be cool. No, it won't. I'm overselling it. It's not going to be cool. It's just going to be whatever. Font, font, do 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 Big font, small font... Your eyes are going to strain more to see that than it is that. So if you had a really small e-reader, which is a five inch e-reader, uh, I don't have one here, but I'll just use this. Can I use this? Is that kind of representative of, yeah, kind of. Okay, a five inch would look like that compared to a Kindle. So yeah, the ink palm's cool and it really is the only um, it really is the only small e-reader 
not not an e-ink device like a Hisense phone with an e-ink screen. So a dedicate, the ink poem is the dedicated e-reader that's small, and it's the only one on the market. So if that is a concern, yes, it's gonna you know you see this and you're I'm gonna go over the screen you're like oh man I can't see it but when you see this you can sit back put your hands behind your head you're like oh yeah that's great you know you can set up auto page turns you have your little page turn animations to smooth things down it's uh, it's a much better experience so yeah when you have a small screen I use your eyes are gonna just strain harder to see what you're trying to see so yeah absolutely that that does play it it, it does play um, a role in your eye health to some degree. Jerry Herrera, which is why gray mode is such is a standing groundwork. You know, there were some earlier e-readers that had a bunch of modes. They had gray mode, they had like, you know, dissolved mode. Yeah, and the Nook color e-readers had like, you know, green and teal and orange and stuff, sepia, to really help you with your uh, your eyesight. Because that's why e-readers exist. It's for your eyesight. That's you know, if it if if that wasn't a concern, if I, if if screens didn't, you're all watching this on a screen right now, and I, I you know, apologize, but but that's the way it goes. If screen, you know, TV screens, computer screens, and cell phones, they're all the same. They're all flickering in your eyes faster than faster than you can you can uh, you know realize. Like this is this is blinking 60 to 120 times a second. You just don't realize it, and that's why it's so fluid. Whereas these aren't doing anything until you do something. Look, they're not doing anything. And then now it did something and it refreshed and it used battery. But in between that, if you turn Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, everything off on this and you leave it there, it will die and still show that. Given that there's no software implementation to tell you when the battery's low, etc. Some e-readers will just die and they'll look like that forever. So yeah, they don't use battery when they're not moving. So that that's that's the that's the beauty of that. Dorora. Wait, did I answer you? No. Dorora, I feel major strain trying to read dark mode with warm light. Everything turns ugly brownish color and the text is in this white. Correct. Uh, we covered that. Yep. Dark mode is, is a great asset during the day, I think. And then at night with the warm light on, it looks terrible. It looks like you're reading mud and it's not good. And it's actually a little bit more blurry, I find it, than it is to read um, with uh, this. Oh, granted, this is a harsher contrast. So you have to um, take that with a grain of salt. I think that's what they, what the cool kids say these days. Uh, Adrian says, yeah, I used to type on black background with white lettering at work. Yes. Um, my, uh, uh, yeah, it's not confidential information. My mother is, um, uh, was a paralegal and, uh, to look at a screen all day and, and, you know, go through law documents and stuff like that and get, you know, documents ready for court and stuff. You don't want to look at this for, you know, nine straight hours. You want to look at that because that's obviously better. So Jerry Herrera, shadowing text could help. Correct. If there was a little bit of a shadow around all of the lettering, um, that would be cool. But it would look more fuzzy because the pixels required to generate the shadows would require you to make, you know, pixels. It would make, make uh, tr translucent gradients of pixels. So, um for an example, if I grab a piece of paper here, shadowing is what he's saying is if I have like an eye, th this will all be like very solid pixels. But the, the device is going to have to utilize lots of little pixels, you know, to make the shadow and depending on how far you want out your shadow these ones will have to be lighter and this will have to be lighter so as you as you increase the distance of the shadow like that you know the 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 the, the, the shadow that extends from the actual character these pixels are going to have a little bit of issues and we have seen that on a lot of devices but the shadowing and shading around the individual characters start to look a little pixelated because well it's just the nature of the beast when you use um ink devices like that so it's a it's a very good idea for sure but yeah spider dude could amazon drop price for black friday i think yes they are someone just said up above let me scroll up here freestyler 39 said yeah um 
8 gig paperwhite is on sale for $115 at Black Friday. I don't know. He said Best Buy, and Best Buy exists in... Oh, he said Best Buy Canada. There you go. So Best Buy Canada. Yeah, so it'll drop. Uh, Bronco, why is it so hard to find replacement screens for the Kindle Oasis? Replacement screens? Let's try to find one for the Kindle Oasis 2. Try it everywhere. It just sucks. You mean the EPD? The actual, the actual screen or screen protector? You... With anything past the Kindle touch, you're not meant to open it. You shouldn't open these. So they're kind of sealed. They're they're one and done. These devices are one and done. It's like those old Samsung phones up until like the S3, S4. You're like, oh, I want to replace my battery. You just, you know, replace the battery. You can't do that anymore. You got to send your device in. You got to have some guy to like rip the glass off and, you know, remove the glue residue and swap the battery that way. So, um uh, planned obsolescence. If you don't know what that is, it means companies want to make something to become obsolete because they could make a super good e-reader and sell it to you and use it for 15 years, but they don't want to do that because then they only sell you one thing for 15 years. It's like back in the day, everyone had, I'm sure all you guys know this too, like everyone has like a good table at home, like from your parents or your grandparents. And the table's like, you know, a wood table with nice like ornate legs and stuff. And you're like, wow, this table's really solid. And you never really think much of it because all your furniture in your current house is from Ikea. I'm not speaking for everyone, but for myself. And you're like, sure, my table's $19 from Ikea. But as it gets wet, it starts to bubble. And like, why isn't my stuff as good as the stuff from like, you know, the 1920s? Because back in the day, materials were cheaper to make and they were better. So you got like these oak cabinets and stuff that last 150 years because, well, stuff was just easier and cheaper back then. Everything was, you know, built better back then. Now they want to build stuff to break and be updated and become obsolete so they can sell you more stuff. That's not a conspiracy. I'm not sitting in my room with a tinfoil hat and going, oh, this is what the big businesses are doing. That is what they're doing. They, they don't want to sell you something once. They want to sell you something over and over again. So that's why it's hard to find components north of a Kindle Touch. So yeah. Mick or Mickley, Mickle, Mickle Gray, from what I've read time and time again, reg reading from an ink reader versus a tablet phone, glass is not what causes eye strain. It's strictly the size of the font. It, it's both. It's both, uh, Mickle. Reason being, if I go like this, I'm going to get my phone out here, go to a, go to a page that's not too incriminating here. <laughs> There's nothing incriminating. Uh, what can I go to? Like a sketch app or something. There we go. Yeah, I drew a, drew a 10 on my phone. This is shining light in your face. It's shining light in your face. It's flickering so fast that you don't even notice it. This is far more damaging to your eyes than e-readers are. But yes, as we covered, it also is how much you have to like squint your eyes to focus. Because the reason we squint our eyes is to reduce the amount of light coming in. Therefore, your 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 eyes are easier to see. That's what the whole pinhole projector thing and you know all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it also has to do with the font size. You are correct. Brad H, bring on the Black Friday discounts. Actually, I haven't checked because it's still early today. But I think we're doing Black Friday as well here at Goody Reader. I'm going to hit some tea here because uh, I've been talking for 38 minutes. Mmm. This episode sponsored by... No, we're not going to show logos. And we don't have any sponsors. All right. Dodora at Mickle Gray. Love the way you spell your name. Oh, is that Michael? Oops. <laughs> I am not a scientist, but I personally can tell my eyes love e-readers. Correct. This is paper. It's ink on a panel. Same as ink would be on a panel of paper. But this is able to move around via electronics. This is not. That's why e-readers exist, because they're electronic paper, e-paper. E-ink is the company name, e-paper is the technology, because it's paper. Yes, so you are correct. Michael Gray, I personally no longer use my Kindle or any e-reader. I use my cell phone 100% of the time due to the ease of highlights note-taking, but that's not a great thing. Michael, as much as even us here at Goody Reader like e-readers... Of course, of course, we're not gonna we're, we're not gonna front and say like no, you can do everything on an e-reader. You can't. You can watch some videos. You can scroll with some ease of use. You can't beat an iPad, an iPhone, a smartphone, and a tablet. You can't beat them because they're instant. 
because they're flashing, as we said, they're flickering and flashing and refreshing 60 to 120 times a second, that's why it's so instant. That's why when you do something, it's ready. You know what I mean? It's ready for it because it's like, oh, 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 oh. It's like a tennis player, like, you know, like bouncing on both his feet. He's like, he's ready to go. These are not, these e-readers are not ready. They're in this stasis mode of not doing anything, not consuming anything. And then when you trigger something, the little particles move around. They go, oh, 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 we got to get into position. And then they change. Then they move. So, yeah, even us at the office, it's like, I'm not going to do my emails on an e-reader. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna uh, kid myself and grab an Onyx with Android and be like, okay, this is octa-core processing. I'm doing my emails. No, because it's so much quicker on an LCD LED enabled device like a smartphone or a tablet. I, I can't do that on here. But for reading, this is the way to go. This is why they've existed for what feels like millennia at this point. These have these have been e-readers have been invented before smartphones were invented. You know what I mean? So there's a, there's obviously a reason for them. And now they have e-ink smartphones. They have like five of them. So yeah, they're they're definitely they're they're there. They're there for a reason. Spider Dude, am I the only Am I the only that covers the Kindle logo with black gaffer tape? It really bothers me. The Kindle logo? Oh this one. Well, I mean that's their brand. I mean everything has a brand. This says Jetstream, this says Asus. I mean that's just their brand. I don't know. Um, sure, yeah, to each their own. Cover it up. Put some tape on it. Boom. Done. Bronco. Actual screen. There's up to three. There's up to Kindle 3 or something that old. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh, you were the... Yeah. For Kobo, you got up until, I think, like the Kobo first gen H2O. Not the Libra, just the H2O. Kindles, Kindle 3, Kindle keyboard. You can swap the batteries out. You can buy them on eBay for like $14. Anything after that, again, guys, they don't want you to swap these. Guys and gals, these are done. These are built. They're made. Unfortunately, when they break, you throw them away and you buy a new one. It's sad. It, it's honestly sad. It's silly to be like, oh, they're only $79. Oh, they're only $49 on sale. I'll just throw it in the garbage and get a new one. It, yeah, sure. <laughs> what do you want me to say? That's, that's how it is. That's true. So, unfortunately, yeah. Bronco, dark mode, lacks sharpness, and has a lot of smudges. You are correct. Yeah. Michael Gray, from what I use time and time again, uh, reading on e-ink e reader still... Wait, did you just say that? Oh, no, no, this is another one, but you you did the same writing format. Reading from an e-ink reader versus tablet phone glass is not what causes the eye strain. Oh, we already read that. <laughs> I'm all the way down here. Sorry, guys. Uh, Senel Antonio Briones Castillo, the warm light with a lamp to font of Kindle. I get it. Ah, uh, the warm light with a lamp to font. Uh, well, we have on these, and we'll, we'll leave this one dark mode until somebody tells me otherwise. You have the brightness dial here, and then you have the brightness dial here. So this is the warm one. This is the one that's going to be the orangey. Let's see if I can... How do I get that to be more central? There you go. There's the color balance. So this is going to be the orange. That's going to be the blue. And honestly, that is pretty blue. Even, like, camera aside, that's pretty blue. You want that stone white right around there. Or because you have a signature edition, you turn on the auto brightness and you see it It virtually it decided the room is bright enough based on that light sensor that I'm going to turn it down. And if I cover that light sensor, it should go up. Or should at least change. <laughs> yeah, don't throw me a bone, Kindle. That's, that's totally fine. I'm just live. No, 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 do whatever you want. Yeah, so that's not uh, cooperating, but yeah, you saw the light sensor does well, work to some degree. But yeah, that's why you um, have the warm light on there. So I, I, um, I understand there's a language barrier and I don't speak Spanish, so your English uh, skills are better than my Spanish. So I appreciate you um, weighing in there. Axe BX, there are substantial differences between brands of e-reader. I've only used Kindles. Axe BX, there are ridiculously amount of changes between e-readers massive amounts because e-readers are no longer e-readers they are they have some octa-core if not decacore devices with you know 128 gigs on board uh that can play games you can watch movies on them they have as we said earlier dedicated octa-core 128 gigs six gigs of ram smartphones with an e-ink screen e-readers have expanded far beyond 
just e-ink readers way further than that and we have 2600 plus videos on our channel so yeah check that out where do you see the next generation of e-ink well we have color and that was massive that was a massive change from 2020 till right now that was a massive change so uh yeah that is big in and of itself uh michael gray is pronounced michael i i know i i probably even knew that i just there was a y there so i was like i was trying to be like you know someone it's like when someone tells you a, a question with an obvious answer you try to not answer it obviously that's i guess what i was trying to do jerry herrera cheers uh rafael berg vasquez message retracted twice oh no please say what you were going to say um understood thank you for the feedback addressing my comment no problem ayush if you can re if you can only read on one e-reader for the rest of your life which one would you pick all of the e-readers i've had since i was 11 these you've had since 11 years Oh, everyone always asks me this, and I don't have an answer. None of us have an answer here because, again, if an e-reader was just for reading books, then they would just be all the same. You would just say, this is going to be the same as anything else. It's just going to read books, and that's it. But the reality is that the e-readers the e now have so many features. They have smartphones. They have, you know, tablets. The, the, the Max Lumi 2 is overkill in the world of e-paper. They have the Guido, which is a, a, a total of 27 inches of e-reader hinged together with like, you know, uh, light sensor so you can swipe pages while you're doing your little piano solo and you like swipe over and it, and it changes. It, it's, it's so hard to say, to just use one. If you're asking about e-readers, Can, can, like, are you talking about one model or like a model line? If it was one model, like like a, like a, a Kindle Paperwhite like three is like solid. That's like a solid, solid e-reader. It's it's past the point of the Kindle Paperwhite two where they had the PDF issues. It's new enough that you know it still has like some updates trickling down to it. Super cheap. Sure, Paperwhite model line. I would probably say maybe like uh, Barnes and Noble would be nice if you're in the States because they always keep it fresh. You know, the devices, none of the two devices look the same from Barnes and Noble. Amazon, all the devices look the same. They all look the same. If you, if you go like this, watch, I'm going to show it like this. I'm going to go like this. Boom. You'd be like, oh, what was that? He's like, oh, oh what was that? Oh, I don't know. Because you don't know. <laughs> the Kindles have so many generations and models and sub brands and, and, and they all look cookie cutter. They all look exactly the same. Someone has a big sheet of dough and there's like stamp, stamp, stamp. Oh, look at this one. 11th gen, bigger stamp. It's the same thing. It's the same thing to the point where they, the Oasis 2 and the Oasis 3 was a whole year gap and nothing changed design wise. So something like Kobo or Barnes and Noble, depending on what country you live in, would be nice because they always keep it fresh. It's, it's a hard question to answer one single device. It really is. Ayush, as the flush screen... <laughs> pardon me. I uh, have some allergies and it's really dry here today. So my nose is like dry. Uh, as the flush screen has almost made sunken screens obsolete. Yeah, you're right. Do you think the color will do the same black and white? Mm. Well, you know... I was going to say no. On color e ink, like e ink from Taiwan e ink, you can't turn the color off. But the re ink stone in the top joy, which we wanted to show you guys today, but only 8% of you guys said you wanted to see it, um, the DES slurry technology from Weifang can turn off the colored particles. They don't come up. Will color e ink replace e ink? Um, uh, regular black and white if if there's a toggle to honestly automatically turn off the color then i could maybe see like way down the road there being no need for just dedicated black and white because there'd be absolutely no reason to not have color the only reason they don't have color now is because of restrictions if all those restrictions are gone there'd be no reason not to have color it could go to a point where um color is the norm and black and white is like you won't even see them anymore so again can't really answer that with a one question but that's just my take you know rafael berg vasquez i have the previous generation in blue or i'm blue should i update 
upgrade now that Amazon buy mine for thirty dollars plus twenty percent off the next Kindle. Oh, oh yeah, the buyback thing in blue. Oh, in blue, you corrected yourself. Yeah, um, if you're in a position, <laughs> used Kindles are hard to resell because the generations change so quick. And do you have a 3G? Do you have ads? Do you have a 3G with ads? 3G with no ads? With Wi-Fi? No Wi-Fi? It's it's a whole thing. So if Amazon's giving you an out and they'll take your device off your hands and give you 20% off a new Kindle, sure, that's not a bad deal. It's really not a bad deal. So um, cheers to that, I guess. This is a really bitter tea. But it's good. It almost feels like it's doing something good to your body, you know? I sit at my desk a lot. So, <clears throat> at work here, I never I, ne I never drink really sugary drinks anyways. Because that's how you get stealth carbs and stealth calories when you drink, like, a whole thing. And it says, like, it's only, you know, 12 grams of sugar, like, per 100. So it's, like, 12, 12, 12, 12. I never drink sugary stuff anyways. But, yeah, drinking tea at your desk is great. Keeps you, like, naturally alert. And otherwise... My go-to snack, legitimately, like, bulk peanuts. Because I could sit here and eat, like, malt balls and Kit Kats all day, but I don't because I'm always at my desk. So, peanuts, man. That's the way to go. Like, actual... Do you know what the ingredients are? Like, peanuts and... And these ones don't even have salt, but peanuts and salt. That's the way to go. Where am I... Where am I, talking, where am I right now? I'm sorry. Uh, my voice is getting hoarse, so I was um, off topic. Seno Antonio... Briones Castillo, I think it's Castillo, or if it's Portuguese, it's Castillo, I think you say the L. How much time one ought to change the battery in a Kindle? Pardon me, if you have a Kindle 3, like a Kindle keyboard, you can go on eBay right now and buy a Kindle for like, a Kindle battery for I think uh, 14 bucks, maybe 20, 20 bucks. You can swap it out, take the back panel off. It, it's really easy, don't get, um, don't get uh, scared. It's basically, Oh, here we go. Whatever. This is a thing. It looks like a battery and there's a little lead like that. So what you would do is you would... Oh, here. What am I doing? I have an angle, man. Come on. So if you have an older device, you can go on eBay and you go like this and you use one of those little tools. Uh, it's just a plastic tool or you can just use anything to pry. You pry the back panel off, put the panel over here like this. You go like this. Plunk. And then on here, you would take the battery out by just unplugging the lead. You get your new battery. Plug the lead, focus, plug the lead back in, and then you put, so there's a battery, and then you put your panel on, and you just go snap, 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 and you're done. So uh, that is how you would replace your battery. Again, you can replace the batteries on here, but it requires a heat gun, it requires a pry bar, plastic pry bar, and a bunch of materials. You even need those little guitar clips. As you're prying open the screen, you need to stuff a guitar clip in there so you can continue working on the rest of the screen. It's an absolute nightmare. We do not recommend it. And even they don't recommend it because devices that you are allowed to open or can open will have Torx screws or some sort of screws to service your device, meaning open it up, clean it, etc. If they don't have those, you're not really meant to open it ever. I'm actually uh, seeing if my phone has any, now that we're on the topic of that. Phones will have it too. Sometimes if you uh, take off like the, the SIM card tray, you'll find like an access screw. So you take the screw off, put it aside, it's really small, and then you can start taking everything off. So uh, yeah, you, you don't... Um... Oh geez, Mike. Another no ah, see you're getting more stingy there. I'm huh, like, the first live I think you donated six dollars. I'm not sure, but this one, <laughs> and then the second live you do like I think you did like four bucks. Now ninety nine cents. Come on, man. And he said you're a nightmare. Come on, man. Hey, it's you're a nightmare, not your. Uh, Michael and I. This this uh, live, by the way, is just to showcase devices. It does not in any way replace the live that Michael and I do once per month to wrap up the month. And we're very excited about that. I'm very excited about that. Michael and I will be live uh, sometime this month, and we will be doing a monthly wrap-up to just kind of go over everything, gives my, give Mike's take on the industry and everything, where is everything heading. Uh, so that's still um, coming. Keep that in mind. We'll give you, a, we'll give you an update when that comes out. Uh, does Kindle uh, Mohammed Arslan... Iqbal said, does Kindle offer a discount on Black Friday? I think so. A couple guys in the chat said that there was a um, uh, a Black Friday discount of a hundred and something dollars. 
<coughs> Best Buy Canada. So uh, check that out. Uh, let's see, X. Oh, 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 Raphael, you said something. Also, I have the Oasis and Rose Gold. Yes, you got the second gen. Uh, the, sorry, the second gen of Oasis 2, which is the Oasis 3. It came in... Um, um, uh, rose gold and it had warm lighting but the rose gold was oh, the rose gold was only in select markets and I felt that that was one of the not cheapest amount wise because it was actually one of the most expensive consumer electronic e-readers at the time but it was a cheap move by Amazon we had waited a whole year after the Oasis 2 and the Oasis 3 came out and it's like it, it was no different it's like now with warm lighting it's like well okay but at the same point like was that really enough i don't know uh yeah jerry herrera i just need a note and reader with a micro sd card and internet browser i can't even think of any e-readers with a micro sd anymore the pw doesn't have a micro sd none of the onyx products have micro micro sd anymore no kindles no kobos kobo uses an sd card as their storage but you can't take it out we could take it out, but then the device doesn't work. Boyu P6, which is not even even around anymore. Um, SD card. Oh, you stumped me. Oh, any of the Hisense phones have a dual SIM card tray, one of which you can use to put a SD card in it, and they don't have note taking though. Moby Scribe Origin slash King Jim Freno will have an SD card and note taking, but they're not very good. Who said that? Yeah, they're not very good. Uh, yeah, so maybe go that route. An ordinary human. I am confused because some Kindle said have blue light and some don't. Can you elaborate on that? Mine is Kindle White 4 Look down at the screen there. This is the light. The base light is this color. Here, let's center it so it does uh, auto white balance. I said it does auto white balance right here. There we go. That's the light where you see it is rather blue. You can correct it by adding some warmth or you can go off the rocker and get some orange candle light. That's what they mean by that. They basically mean when a Kindle has blue light only is what they're saying is that it doesn't have warm light. So yeah. Oh, I just tapped that. Oopsie. Yes, Stephen Prosser, another great live peer. I'm looking forward to the book's leaf review. The preview looks amazing, and I'm having trouble justifying the purchase when I already own an over three color, though. You are very correct. We will get on that. Michael is correct here. After his uh, donation, he said Onyx Books Leaf announced today. Uh, apparently, it was released 11 a.m. China time, which is 11.30 Japan time, which it's 11.30 now. Uh, I don't really know. But yeah, we're going to be talking about it. Jerry Herrera, try almonds. You are correct. Almonds are good too. Peanuts are a little bit on the calorie dense side, but almonds are a little bit uh, less oily than peanuts. And yeah, you can go to town on almonds. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Almonds are good. Almonds are good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I'm more of a more of a peanut guy, but yeah, a, a good trail mix, and not the trail mix that's like here's the trail mix, and it's got like white chocolate chips and M and M's in it. And I mean, although those are great, but. No, a trail mix with raisins, dried cranberries, uh, dried mango chunks, <laughs> white chocolate chips, and M and M's is not a, uh, a a trail mix that you eat when you're you're sitting at your desk for you know four to twelve hours a day. That's not what you eat. Uh, you eat normal nuts or like to a lesser extent. I always keep a bag of rice crackers at my desk too. But even then, man, you can just go nuts on those. But yeah, uh, what am I talking about? Michael said, you're a nightmare. Jesus. Uh, Raphael said, Michael, good evening, sir. Yes, that is great. And Danny Wong says, hey, good morning, Peter. So, Danny, good morning. Wait, so you're either in Singapore or something, or Indonesia or China, or you're not here and you're just saying good morning to me because you know it's morning here. So, yeah. An ordinary human. Thank you. That's what I mean. So, uh, I didn't, I didn't to wear blue light filter glass for reading oh like that no so what they're saying about the blue light is that's going to be different than your phone I'll pull up my phone here again which is there it is so on your phone you have like night light 
that's super blue. You're like, oh, you know, it's so blue. It's getting my eyes. It, you know, hurts the cones in your eyes, you know. Turning on nightlight warms it up, turns it kind of orangey and, and peach. That's what they mean by the whole blue light cut. You don't need to buy any special blue light cut things here. So, ah, Hong Kong, dang, I almost had it. I, I was circling your, your, your area. I was like, China, Singapore, Indonesia, but yeah, Hong Kong. Nice. Thank you for stopping by, Danny. Um, very much appreciated. I could probably go to, uh, go to the, the, one of the, the edge of Japan and throw a stone and it'll, it'll land in your shores. So we're, we're, we're all close on this, on this earth. We're all right next to each other. Thomas Mann is a new paper white using Carta 1200 display. Yes, it is. Carta 1200. Uh, they didn't come out and say that um, right out of the gates. I don't know why. In all of their uh, advertisement um, campaigns, and I had some... Oh, I had like a stack of... Oh, I wanted to show you guys. Did I leave it on my... Oh, man. Talk about not being prepared. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, it was uh, just some uh, promotional stuff we got from the uh, trade show we went to. But um, the Amazon Paperweight 5, when it was announced, and up until very, very recently, no one was saying anything about 1200. And Michael and I were talking. We were like, you know, Kindle uh, Kobo's going nuts saying the 1200, 1200, 1200 HD. <laughs> Why would you not want to say your device is 1200? Because uh, that's a selling point. That's a huge selling point. I would have, I would have loved to say my device has 1200. Actually, is it here? Did I throw it out? Oh, I did. Here it is. Oh, that's the Galaxy Flip. Yeah, we saw a Samsung Galaxy at the trade show yesterday too, um, or two days ago. They had the new Galaxy Flip. Have you guys ever used this? Have you ever tried like even a display at a, at a store? It feels like you're breaking it when you open it. And they're like, no, you're not going to break it. You can open 200,000 times, which is the equivalent of five years. Yeah, I know. But like, well, as I was doing it, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And it's quite phenomenal. I'm not trying to sell them on it, but it's quite phenomenal. Like you can't really notice the, the bind unless you're holding it up to your head and you're like, Oh, there it is. See, you guys aren't perfect. Like, well, sure. But that's impressive. And when you flip that open, even if you flip it closed a little bit, you can still interact with the bend. Oh, it's magic. Magic, people. I have my little uh, paper recycling bin down here. I'm trying to look for those, that Kindle stuff. What did we see at the, uh... oh yeah, we talked to Casio. Uh, we might be getting a sample of something coming from Casio. Uh, yeah, all my Kindle stuff is gone, but uh, yeah, we had some good contacts and it was a good uh, event. I think the guys are going to edit up a uh, little wrap up of the event. It was just styluses. It was connected ink. It was about touch pens and Wacom and stuff. So if you've been following our coverage, you'll see that. Uh, the small Riki says the smallest e-reader isn't an iPhone question mark. No, uh, Riki, if you're just joining us, a smartphone and an e-reader are apples and oranges. They're not the same thing. They're completely different. They're completely different. This is a smartphone. It's going to be flashing and reflecting, and you can play asphalt on it and go, yeah, totally rocking. This is an ebook reader. They have some ebook readers that you can do some pretty marvelous things on. They have some tablets with e-paper e e screens. So yeah, they're not the same thing. They're they're quite different. Uh, us, I, Ayush, again, what has a man got to do to have an e-reader with a SIM card support for minimalist life? E-readers with SIM cards do exist. Um, and in fact, the Big Me line, yes, has 4G built in. The Big Me line, the, the, the S3 color, the B1 Pro, and the new B1, no, the B1, and the B1 Pro is going to come out very soon as well. Uh, they all have 4G LTE, 4G reception, I'll just say, I don't want to quote, 4G reception built into the devices themselves, and some devices like the... Whiskey EE right and I think the Hanvon Smart Office have SIM card slots. Yes, actual SIM cards. Or you can get yourself um, a large screen A7 CC. So like bigger than this smartphone, almost the size, actually bigger screen than a Kindle. It's a 6.7 inch, uh, bigger screen than a Kindle Paperwhite non-recent gen. And they have SIM card slots all day long. So yeah. Oh, hello from Baston. I'm going to say Baston. I'm sorry if that's offensive. It's funny. Don't worry. I'm, I'm half American. My mother was born in Salt Lake City. Uh, if I wanted to, I can get my American passport. I haven't yet, but 
yeah. All, it's all love. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody. What is the advantage of a Kindle device? I read on my iPhone or iPad. Well, that's the advantage, Robert. Please uh, check out our channel. Welcome to the channel. And if you look at an e-reader, this is paper. This, this, you're, you're going to say it's not paper. It is. That's the same as that. It's just that I can't move each individual pixel around because it's printed. I'd have to throw it away and print something else. Electronically connected by a little ribbon cable inside, this is paper. It's electronic. When I click on something, it's going to move. It's going to do something. Why are you pulling focus to? Air? Yeah, so that's what it's going to do. And it's going to be really easy on your eyes. It's going to be low battery consumption. It's fantastic of a technology. And that's why our entire business exists. And that's what we're here for. Rafael Berg Vasquez has donated $5. Rafael, thank you very much. Again, we're not doing this like a Twitch stream kind of thing. We're not here for donations. That is very much appreciated. We're going to grab that dollars. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to lunch. We're going to grab ourselves a McDonald's double spicy cheeseburger. And that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take your $5 and we're just going to you know, splurge. No, I'm gonna, we're going to pop that into the bank. We're all going to split it. And we're all going to think about you, Raphael, and buy a $5 cake and cut it into 30 pieces and give everyone a little sliver of cake. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. We do this to give back. We don't just do this for donations. Uh, Raphael Berg Vasquez, the donator right there. What? Uh, E-reader, 8-inch with warm light. With Kindle access, I'm a doctor. Oh, Raphael, you're a doctor, and you only donated $5. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm being, I'm kidding. I'm a doctor, and I got a lot of years of unlimited gift cards from coworkers. I need a bigger screen. So you'll have to get an Android tablet, like a uh, Onyx Books Nova Air or a Nova 3 Color 7.8, and you... Download the Kindle app on there, sign into Kindle, and then you can use your Onyx like a Kindle or like a Kobo or like a whatever you want. You can download anything you want on those. So my recommendation to you is an Onyx Books Nova line of devices because they're all around the 8-inch mark and they all have Android. Uh... Ayush, do you think Amazon as a company is focusing lesser and lesser on the e-readers and more and more on their 1984 dystopian spying echo devices? I, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to dig deeper into the company and, and see what they're focused on. I mean, for some of the, like, to, to make a piece of hardware as they do and sell it for like $49 on sale sometimes, you almost guarantee they're losing money on that. Um, it's like Costco when they sell the chicken. You know, they're not making money on the chicken. But as you walk through Costco, you're buying a big TV. You're like, oh, I got this TV. So sure, they lose three bucks on chicken, but they just made, you know, $450 off one consumer purchasable goods. So, um, you know, yeah, it's like it's like anything. You know, we, we for example, not a lot of companies are going to ship to India because it's a very hard company. It's a very hard country to ship to. It's very expensive. We ship to India. We lose a ton of money shipping to India. Why do we do it? Because we want to build the community. We want to give back to you guys. And we know that a lot of you guys in India don't have access to devices as much as other parts of the world. So if you want to buy something, you can't buy it in India, for example. And there's lots of other countries. I'm just using India as an example. We will ship there. We lose money doing it. I we lose money doing it. I know we do. And I, I can say that we do, but we still do it because we make up money in other places. So that's why we do that. Thomas Mann, strange they do not mention it. Yeah, I don't know what they, I don't know why they did. That would have been a huge selling point to say we're using the the um uh what do you call it? the the Carta twelve hundred as a selling point. That's a huge selling point. Spider Dude, your there it is sounded very Kermit Sesame Street. Yeah, maybe. Uh I grew up watching that before I went to Kindergarten. I had an afternoon class of kindergarten in Vancouver, and um, I used to watch like Mr. Dress Up, uh, uh, some of the Tickle Trunk. It was like a trunk full of toys. I think that was Mr. Dress Up. That guy was gangster. And yeah, Sesame Street and stuff like that. Um, Ayush, Ink Palm 5 is the smallest e reader that isn't a phone. Ah! 10 points for you, Ayush. You're correct. The Ink Palm is the smallest e reader on the market currently available, not the Kobo Mini, that is not a phone. You are correct. Ricky, what is the smallest e-reader excluding phones? Whoa, you answered that before Ricky asked it. Whoa, you guys are in cahoots with each other. Uh, that, Ricky, the Ink, what did I just say? Ink Palm by Xiaomi. 
don't sue me on the whole Xiaomi, Xiaomi, show me thing, okay? I can pronounce a bunch of things you guys can, and you can all pronounce a bunch of things in your native languages that we cannot. So just let's let's just cut it. Let's be all be friends. Xiaomi, 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 whatever. The Ink Palm 5 is a great device, and it is the only one that is not a phone that it is that is a small e-reader. Uh, Robert Blend, where are you from? I am born and raised in Vancouver, but um, I spent most of all of my childhood going back and forth to see my family down in the states washington area um to a lesser extent oregon california even salt lake city etc uh so he oh in new york too i have a family in new york uh in brooklyn bronx brooklyn yeah one of those uh so heap I, ha I got an oasis last week and the ghosting is somewhat a little too noticeable for me and it's bothering me it's paper white Worth the upgrade, better screen. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the Carta 1200 is a better. Um, well, the clouds just covered. It got super dark in here. Uh, the the um, the Carta 1200 screen is better. Yeah, so you want to do that. Uh, we're gonna wrap up here. We're already 10 minutes over, actually. Uh, we'll do a couple more here. Sohib, I already answered you. Uh, Bajaj Samsung S7 Plus. I don't know what you're referencing, but uh, that's a good phone. Yeah, solid phone. The 4K Guru. I bought a Paperweight 4 this September. Nice. Oh, you did the face after. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, we had a couple guys up above that said they did a trade-in program, and they give you uh, X amount of dollars plus 20% off if you buy a new Kindle, etc., etc. So maybe maybe get on that, perhaps. Uh, you should we ship to Nepal, too. Hmm. I'm going to tell you. There is no country we can't ship to except I don't think the Vatican is on the drop down. I think you might have to ship to like Italy or something and, and with like a Vatican um, uh, postal code or zip code and then they'll sort it. But I don't think the Vatican is on the drop down. You know what is on the drop down too, actually, North Korea. So I'm just saying, because that's a relatively hard country to buy and ship things from and to. So I'm just saying, if you are able to somehow watch this, which is virtually impossible from a country such as that, we can ship to you. We do ship to Nepal. Um, it's kind of just a water cooler talk around the office here. It's like, yeah, we noticed that certain countries that were very strange, like Marshall Islands was on the... Um, was on the drop down of uh, UPS. And we're like, where's the Marshall Islands? It's an American territory. It looks like a little horseshoe and it, it's just this atoll. It's in the middle of the, the Pacific Ocean, maybe. And it's just, it, it crests the ocean. And it's like, man, I wouldn't want to live there. It's probably beautiful. It's just, man, I wouldn't want to live there. Uh, Robert Blant, uh, Matt Weaver, you're very charismatic. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's a team effort. I mean, we're all feeding off of each other here at the offices online when i talk to mike on the phone we whatsapp each other we call each other mike and i we're just you know shooting the breeze and just talking about everything and um yeah it's just it's energy feeding off of each other you know it's we're all we're all here for e-readers um we're all here for e-ink and should be all here for each other and you know just support each other and, and if you guys have any questions um you know what i hate i hate when people ask a question and then someone says god you don't know question mark oh uh, one of the first times I, I, I started to get into forums when I was way younger, 14, 15, and um, video game forums, car forums, whatever. First experience with a forum, rev scene, I think, cars, I said like, oh, hey guys, uh, I'm new to cars, whatever, how do I do this? And the first response was, God, you don't know. And I've never forgotten that. I talk about it with my friends. God, you don't know, question mark, is not a proper response to someone who is in need. It, it just, it, it traumatized me from forums. I, I can't think of a forum without just thinking about that moment. It's absolutely terrible. Someone has a question. Even if it's a stupid question you know the answer to. You can't look down on them because of what they say. Like someone's like, here for example, I'm not saying it's a stupid question, but for example, someone's like, what does blue light mean on a Kindle? Am I going to go, oh, yeah, blue light, look at this guy, he doesn't know anything. What if that guy knows how to fly a plane? Do I know how to fly a plane? No. Don't, what is it, belittle or degrade people because they know, they don't know something that you do or, or vice versa, that you know something that they don't because it's just, it's a, it's a selfish, very rude thing to do and it's not helpful. It's not helpful to do that. Uh, Robert, great show. Thank you. Uh, yes, this is, um, we want to give back and uh, we did a poll and uh, 
out of 1,000 votes almost, 70% of you guys said you want to see the Kindle Paperwhite 5, so we answered every question. Except we didn't do wireless charging. Let's do that right now, guys. This is so silly. Why didn't I even do that? I guess I was waiting for one of you guys to ask that. So we got a wireless charger here. I think it's on. Where's the status indicator? Yeah, it's on. All right. First, oh, we're going to be dangerous, and we're going to put on the 8 gig. Is it going to charge? No, it doesn't charge because there's no wireless charging Qi or Qi adapter on there, so it doesn't do it. 32 gig. Watch this. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> why oh it's not plugged in okay rewind okay watch this that's cool that's cool you know we actually actually mike thought of it uh, a year ago we started selling a um wireless charger adapter kit for e-readers and we still sell it but it's you don't need it anymore especially with kindle plugs in here and very smoothly to the back sticks to the back and you can charge any e-reader but now you don't need to look no wires no wires watch cool that's cool yes there's some efficiency loss because um well it's wirelessly charging and it it's apparently worse for the device but yeah anyways uh okay we're gonna answer all the questions i'm sorry we're, we're almost done here um india isn't having trade programs. Yes, uh, 4K Guru. India is a very hard country to ship to. You need to give us your tax number. The clearance is, is a pain. We understand. That's why we, we try to do our best. Stephen Prosser, Mr. Dress Up, dropping to Canadian references. Oh, you know it. Ayush, there was never an S7 Plus. There was an S7 Edge, which is the best one I've ever used. Nice. Very good. Raphael, that would be the best Nova reader then. And where can I get one of those t-shirts from Good Evening? <laughs> this... You gotta wear this t-shirt and work or you get smacked with a stack of ebooks. No, um, you can wear whatever you want. I just wear this for the live. Uh, I got it on Vistaprint. Uh, we just got it on Vistaprint. If you want one, we can just send you one. I mean, not have to charge you for it or anything. If you, if you guys want a shirt, maybe email us and be like, can I have a shirt? But it's it's just a regular t-shirt. And it just says Goody Reader on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can put your $5 towards that. Uh, Ayush, I'm sorry. There was a S7, but as a tablet. Sure. Uh, Vaughn or Vondale. 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 Okay. Please update the Sony DPT news. We went to DP... Uh, sorry. Uh, not DPT. Connected Ink. There's a little, two more questions. That's it. We went to Connected Ink yesterday, hoping to see Linfini or Sony or... Uh, uh, Fujitsu was there, but all they had was the second gen Quaderno, and we've already seen that because they've already sent it to us. Um, unfortunately, Connected Ink is a Wacom event, so they didn't have anything outside of Wacom pens. But Pilot was there, uh, Stadler was there, Lamy was there, Fujitsu was there, Samsung was there, and they all showed note taking. We have a bunch of coverage on our, our on our YouTube channel. And next month there is a uh, um jump festa in tokyo or chiba and uh we're gonna see some more e-ink stuff uh, i think sony's there but they might just be there for publishing their manga um uh progress technology is going to be there with the e1 manga reader they're going to be there so we're going to be going there as well and we will show you guys coverage on that event as well but unfortunately guys earlier this year we did see the color sony dpt that was a real thing i was there with someone filming over my shoulder we we went to that event it was a real thing I touched the device. It was Kaleido 2, Kaleido 2.5, I think they called it. It was awesome, but no one's picked it up yet, and Sony hasn't moved on it yet. So, yeah. Stephen Prosser, Raphael, I own one of the Nova 3 colors. You may want to consider the Nova Air if color isn't important. Correct. Matt Weaver, smiley face, and the 4K Guru. I charge my Kindle Paperwhite 4 with a 10-watt charger. Is it good, or should I charge with the 5-watt? Usually it doesn't matter because... The device will never allow itself to draw in more power than it's usually allowed. For example, when you plug in an adapter, you know, like into the wall, it's like 120 volts or 220 volts. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you're from South Korea, for example, 100 in Japan, 110 in Canada, etc. The device isn't, isn't being like buzzed with 120 volts. That's how you're able to basically lick the end of a micro USB cable plugged into a wall and you're not getting zapped. And that's because the adapter or converter, whatever way you want to say it, it adapts it for you to the correct draw of electricity. 
Therefore, your device doesn't go boom every time you plug it in. Anyways, you guys have been absolutely amazing. Um, we very much appreciate the community around this. Um, we very much appreciate the 1,000 votes that went into what today's device should be. I hope we've showed everything. It's more of just a way to give back. It's not make or break that you watch this one because we've already done reviews. We've already done comparisons. Um, and if you want to know what's different between these two, you can watch the comparison video that we did. We talk about the five differences that are different between the Kindle Paperwhite 32 gigabones and the 8 gig and why if at all you should switch from this to that my personal opinion is that wireless charging is really cool but you don't need to spend 50 dollars more for a light sensor and honestly we already said at the beginning the 8 gigs is enough this the 5 gigs is enough for books i have all this stuff on here it would take me forever to read and even if i don't want it just remove it and, and just download it later from my account so no you don't necessarily need the 32 gig it's cool it's fresh it's doing uh you know new things with its wireless charging but it's not necessary especially for uh you know a, a, a third of the cost of the eight to upgrade to the 32 you guys have been reddit your reddit question mark did i say reddit i didn't say anything about reddit did i say reddit i don't know anyways thank you guys so much uh, very much appreciated. If you guys have any other questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them down below. You can watch this VOD after the fact. It will be upload. It'll be uploaded to YouTube automatically, and it'll be conformed, and you guys can watch it. Otherwise, you don't need to watch this if you want to see the review. You just simply watch the review. Thank you all so much. Again, this uh, does not replace the uh, monthly wrap-up that Michael and myself do. We will, of course, do that very soon. I don't have anything else to say. Oh, yeah, contests are coming up. We had our last contest winner from, I don't remember, Sweden or something. And, uh, yeah, we shipped off their uh, Lo Libra 2. And uh, we had another contest winner uh, from the USA, from Chicago, I think, who just received their Big Me that we shipped off, and they love it. So, uh, yeah, lots of contests coming through. Uh, if you want a shirt, it's not really official. Just ask us for a shirt. We can see if we can arrange one over to you. Uh, yeah, it's not very... It's just a shirt. It's just a regular shirt. So yeah, let us know. Thank you very much, everybody. We appreciate it. We'll be here every Thursday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. I guess that would be 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, it'll be uh, 9.30 a.m. Hong Kong time, China time, and 11, uh, 10.30 uh, uh, Japan time. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much, everybody. You guys have been amazing. We're over the time slot, so we're going to say goodbye. Let us know if you need anything else. Now we're going to wait 14 seconds while I drink some tea because that's how long OBS needs us to wait. Bye-bye.